Hello friends, it's Sarah here. Welcome back. I have a conveniently tall stack of books next to me. Uh, it didn't really seem like that much when I was putting it all together, but then I sat it down next to me and it's as tall as I am. Uh, hey, hi, welcome. We are talking October TBR today. I'm super, super excited about it. I just finished up Becca's Bookopolathon, which was the entire month of September. Um, pretty sure by the time I'm posting this, that video will already be up, so I will be sure to link that. Um, all of the places up here and down there and all of the places. Uh, oh, I'm losing my books. So uh, let's go ahead and jump on in to see what I will hopefully be reading for the month of October. The first book that I have to share with you is, I'm, I'm very behind on this and it does have a glare on it. It has the library coding on it because I, I checked it out for my library, obviously, but I checked it out in about the middle of September, maybe even the beginning of September, and I've already had to extend my loan on it once because I was so wrapped up in the books that I had chosen for Bookopolathon that I never even got to this one. So I am gonna have to renew my loan on it again because it's due tomorrow, but this is The Man Who Died Twice. It is the second in, I, I know there's a third one coming out in the next couple of months and that's why I wanted to go ahead and read the second one. Um, I don't know if the third one will wrap up the series or if it will be ongoing, but this is the second book of the Thursday Murder Club series. I did read the Thursday Murder Club earlier in the year and I did enjoy it. It took me a little while to get into it. It's that British humor that is not um, necessarily intuitive to me. Uh, so I did enjoy it overall. I think I gave it like either a three and a half or a four stars. Um, and so I'm excited to read the second one. Like I said, I know the third one is coming out. I think it's November 3rd, although now I feel like I'm maybe getting my release dates mixed up. So I know it's coming out soon. Um, so I'd like to read the second one before the third one comes out. So that's the first book that is going to be on my TBR for the month of October. The second one, y'all, I have shown such incredible restraint not picking this one up until now. I can't tell you how excited I am about Love on the Brain. I cannot tell you how much I loved The Love Hypothesis. This is now Ali Hazelwood's second um, in the STEM, what does she call them? Like the STEM Chronicles, I think. Um, basically, it is women in STEM who, they're very steamy romances about women in STEM. So I love the love hypothesis. I don't know if this one is another kind of fanfic. I'm not a Star Wars person. Um, so I did not realize going in to the love hypothesis that that was basically a Kylo Ren, I don't, I don't remember the other person's name. Anyways, it was a fanfic, essentially. Uh, I don't know if this is a fanfic of anything. I'm perfectly content going in with no preconceived notions. I am super excited about this. And like I said, this actually came, you can tell that it's a book of the month copy. Um, it came, it arrived on my doorstep on September the 1st. And like I said, I was busy with my prompts that I had already chosen for Bookopolathon, so I was so good and I did not get into this um, because I really wanted to complete that challenge. So October, this one's on my list. Okay, the next and actually only remaining book that is not in a challenge for me this month is The Witches by Roald Dahl. So I first came upon this book, I think last year when I really started getting into um, into booktube and it's basically, I don't know if this is considered, oh, it does say the graphic novel. There we go. So this is The Witches, the graphic novel by Rodal. Um, I can remember, I mean, this is like, this is a, a children's lit, a kid lit author from my childhood. So very old. <laughs> 
uh, but I have never read a graphic novel before. I know, just kick me right off a of booktube right now. Um, but I found this last year and I actually had intended to read it for um, in October of last year. October came and went and that never actually happened. So this has been sitting and I have been waiting. Um, I've been waiting to use this because there is a prompt for the 52 book uh, book club challenge this year that says a graphic novel. So I have, from the beginning of the year, I have planned out my TBR so that I could read this in October. And I'm very, very excited about it. I literally know nothing about it. Um, I know that I think the witches are supposed to be teachers. Um, and that's it. That's that's all I know. I think I think the teachers turn out to be witches and they, you know, like do crazy things to the kids or something like that. Um, very excited about this. It's it is chunky. For, I mean, it's 296 pages. So, you know, hopefully it'll be a quick read. But I was surprised at how how chunky this actually was. Um, I don't know if that's pretty typical for a graphic novel. Like I said, I'm a total newbie, um, but I'm excited to read my first one. All right. Here we go. I'm very nervous to announce, I mean, announce sounds like a very formal thing. Um, I'm very, I'm very nervous to kind of put this out there in the universe, but this month, as I alluded to earlier, I am going to try to challenge myself to two separate reading challenges. The first one, I, I'm so far behind the eight ball on this, guys. I have never been, I mean, I've mentioned before about how I'm like just starting to read thrillers and I have been afraid of things my whole entire life. I, I always say I'm afraid of my own shadow. So obviously thrillers, not my go-to genre, right? But I've been reading more of like the psychological thrillers and I'm really enjoying that aspect of them. I don't like the blood and the guts and the gore. I could really do without all of that, but I lo I'm loving the psychological thrillers. And so I am kind of dipping a toe out of my comfort zone and I am going to read an entire series this month. And I got them all from Book of the Month. Um, I was, I have been very strategically ordering my add-ons for the last couple months because I'm reading, can you even tell what that, what that is? Practical Magic. I cannot tell you how excited I am about this. Ever since I have joined Book of the Month and any kind of really reading group, um, I'm a part of a couple of different reading groups on Facebook and on Instagram. And of course I watch tons of booktube videos. So everybody seems to love these books. And I am mildly annoyed that uh, Practical Magic is the only one that doesn't fit the same color scheme, but I can almost kind of be okay with that because this is uh, number one and then the, the next three kind of coordinate. So for the Practical Magic reading challenge, I am, I was debating whether I was going to read them in chronological order or whether I was going to read them in the order in which they are written. And I will be very honest with you, I started reading them originally in chronological order. So that would be with um, Magic Lessons. This is actually the first chronologically. It tells the history of the family. So I did start, and you can actually even see my bookmark. I think I'm about 30 pages into that and it, it just never stuck with me. And I think that's because I don't have an emotional connection to the characters. So I've decided that I'm gonna try again and I'm going to start with Practical Magic. This seems to be the book that everyone loves. This seems to be the movie that everyone loves. Never seen the movie either. Um, but I, I'm gonna start with Practical Magic and I'm going to read them in the order that they, in publishing order instead of chronological order. So here's how I'm gonna be reading them. It's gonna be Practical Magic, followed by The Rules of Magic, which I think is actually the most recent one to come out. I think this is the one that completes the series. Um, then Magic Lessons, and then the Book of Magic. So 
Um, that's the order that I'm going to be reading them in. I am really excited. I wanted to love the series and I, I can't really remember why. Um, I mean, I know I said I didn't really have a, an emotional connection with the characters, but I think maybe I had a lot going on in my life too when I was trying to read those uh, the first time around. And so this time I'm gonna be more focused and hopefully I will enjoy them and love them because I know that so many people really do love the series and love the characters. So I'm hoping to be one of those as well. Okay, the next book challenge or reading challenge that I have for myself. This is one that I actually wanted to complete in September. I thought of it in August and I planned for it. I had all of the books picked out and then uh, Bookopolathon really took a lot more out of me than I had anticipated. Um, and so I did not get to this challenge. So I, um, have been loving. I've mentioned so many times already that like if I could just be a career student, I totally would. I would take every college course offered. I would go for every degree that they would let me have. I love education and I love knowledge. I love the atmosphere of academia. And you know, I mentioned in one of my last videos that I I, I just love the entire atmosphere and I really want to get back into academia and I want to teach at the college level. I have recently been introduced to dark academia as a genre and I am so excited. I have put together a reading list of dark academia that I want to read and that's why the idea really came to me in August when we were really in back to school season um, here in Texas. Kiddos go back to school in August. So my son started pre-K in August and all the other students around here started, um, started school in August. I didn't have time in August to really put this, um, you know, to, to really start into this reading challenge, but I thought I was gonna do it in September. That never materialized, so. If I get done with my Practical Magic series with enough time to spare, I am going to start my Dark Academia reading challenge. And I'm going to start that where else but where it all started. Um, this is The Secret History. It's by Donna Tart. It is widely recognized as the very first in the Dark Academia genre. And I'm really, really excited um, to start there. There's gonna be some unpopular opinions here, so fair warning, my second Dark Academia book, it's gonna be The Maidens. Um, this is by Alex Michaelides or Michaelides. Um, I love The Silent Patient. I know this one has pretty much been said, This it, it, it's not on the same level as The Silent Patient. Lots of people don't enjoy this one, didn't enjoy this one at all. Um, in fact, Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin, he read this as one of his like, what was it like Instagram's most hated thrillers or something like that? I can't remember what, I'll try to find it and I'll link his video down below, but basically like everybody else panned on it, he hated it. Um, but look, I bought it, I paid for it, it's sitting on my shelf, um, I'm gonna read it. So we'll see if my taste is a little more simplistic than the rest of Bookstagram, or you know, if I if I hate it just like everybody else does. Um, all right, here we go. Your girl Ruth Ware wrote a new one. This one I think came in my August book of the month box. It's the It Girl. I really really enjoy Ruth Ware. Uh, I think Gavin did have another one. Was it one by one that he read? Um, that was in that other like top most, most hated whatever thrillers. Uh, I, th I think he did have a Ruth Ware in there. I think it was one by one, which was not exactly my favorite either. Um, but this one has to do with dark academia. We're gonna give it a try. It's thick. Uh, I mean, I don't know how many pages it is. I have never actually literally read 
a Ruthware. Um, okay, 420 pages. 420. There you go. Uh, I have always listened to her on audiobooks, so this is going to be my first one to actually read. I don't know if that will have, you know, if that will make a difference on my enjoyment level or not, but we're going to see. Uh, okay, the next one, I want to show you these two together and I'll kind of explain my rationale in why I'm choosing the one that I did. So, so far, all three of the ones that I've shown you have been strictly the dark academia aesthetic, strictly the dark academia genre. And so to carry on with that, I really wanted to read Babel or Babel, depending on where you live um, and how you pronounce this. I think this is a stunning cover. It's a Barnes and Noble limited edition that I literally walked into the store and picked up off the shelf on the day it was released. I was so excited about this. Um, but it's like 500, almost 600 pages. And I had mentioned earlier that, you know, Bookopolathon really kind of took it out of me. I read some really heavy books during the month of September and some really thick books in the month of September. And so originally I wanted to include Babel in my Dark Academia reading challenge. Depending on how I feel when I get to this point, I may or may not still go with Babel. I feel like I'm not going to get there though um, because this is a lot of books already to read and like I said, that's like 500, 600 pages. So I'm sliding another one in there that I may read in its place and that it's not strictly dark academia, okay? I'm talking about educated, guys. This is by Tara Westover. Um, this is not, like I said, it's strictly dark academia. She talks about her upbringing and how she was raised. Um, and it does have to do, I, there, I know there's tons of trigger warnings in it. I was supposed to read this earlier in the year as a buddy read with someone. And the gal that I was reading with, um, she actually started the audiobook a couple days before I physically started reading this. And she bailed out. She said she wasn't into it, it wasn't her thing, and so I have kind of just put it off. I haven't been really overly excited about it. Um, my book club did read this several years ago before I joined the book club, and so they did tell me, you know, that it's a little bit heavier of a read. Like I said, it does have some trigger warnings. Um, so it's not that this is going to be a joy read and this would not, it's just that this is very... Um, from what I have heard, it's incredibly uh, academic and very textbook-ish, and it's a, it's a lot more technical in its writing. And so this one, I feel, while not necessarily a lighter, more uplifting read, I think this one will be more of a story and less on the technical side. So I'm probably going to go ahead and switch this out um, and just kind of slide that into place in my Dark Academia reading challenge. Um, but like I said, I'll know, I'll kind of feel it out and I'll know uh, what I need to do when I get there. So that's a lot of talking. That's a lot of books. It's a lot of challenges. <laughs> um, thanks so much for joining me, guys. Here's what I would love to know from you. I would love to know from all of these books that I've shared with you today, do you have a favorite? Do you have a book that you really, really loved or that you really, really didn't love? How do you feel about the Practical Magic series? Am I reading these totally in the wrong order? You know, how should I read these? In what order should I read them? Did you love them? Was the, you know, was the book better than the movie? I mean, duh, was the book better than the movie? Uh, <laughs> Tell me all of your thoughts. I'm so curious to find out what you guys think of my picks for spooky season and for going into fall. Like I said, this is my favorite time of year, so I'm really, really excited to get in. I'm excited for the cooler weather. I am excited just to hopefully have more time to just chill and relax. We had a crazy summer and you know, I felt like we were just going all the time. I'm ready to kind of snuggle in and enjoy the fall. So let me know what your favorite thing about fall is, um, where you are, and I'll talk to you guys really soon. Thanks for joining.
拜拜。